In this introduction to design simulation, we'll briefly explain the purpose of this application and show you a workflow for utilizing the powerful associativity and synchronous technology built within NX. So with that said, we'll not go deep into technical understanding of FEA simulation, but rather focus on the workflow. Design simulation is a simplified finite element analysis application for design engineers, making them able to take qualitative design choices based on simple structural analysis. Its user interface and capability is designed so you don't have to be an expert in order to do initial analysis of a design. By utilizing this application, you can make sure that design engineers can make smarter and better choices when designing components, and your analyst experts may be relieved from these smaller tasks and get more time to do more complex analyses. The result is increased efficiency, more robust design done in less time. In this example, our starting point is this twin engine assembly, and we'll do a quick structural analysis of this piston rod. In my assembly structure, I've created an empty subassembly call analysis and an empty part file. So if I make this part file as the work part by double clicking it, you can see that all of the geometry is grayed out, meaning that there simply is nothing there. Now, I have given this empty part file the same name as the original part file I will analyze, only with an underscore i at the end of it, which stands for idolized. This is obviously not required, but using these naming rules within a company or work group makes it easier for both yourself and your colleagues to recognize the file. Idolized basically means simplified, so it's like removing details such as small blends or holes and prepare it for analysis. So with this idolized part file active, I can proceed by generating an associative copy by using the wave geometry linker. Remember to have checked associative before clicking apply or OK. So what this now mean is that I have arranged this part file with a copy of our original part, and I can do whatever I liked with this new model without affecting the original. So if you have a look at our history tree, all you can see is a linked body from the original one. Now, the clever thing about this associative copy is that any changes that occurs in the original geometry will also occur in the associative copy that I've just generated, while preserving any simplification I've done to the associative copy. This might seem unclear to you at this moment, but I will demonstrate it more thoroughly at the end of this lesson. Now that I got my associative copy of the geometry, I can go ahead and make any simplification that I desire for this component. This is where synchronous tools are extremely powerful, where you can both delete details or move faces on the fly. When I'm satisfied with idolizing the file, I can go ahead and activate the design simulation application. In this dialog, we get the option to automatically create an idolized file. But since we have already done this operation, I'll just select the geometry I want to bring into my simulation and click OK. The structure is now built as the following in our simulation file view. We have our associative idolized copy at the bottom. Then we have the FEM file, where the information about mesh and material properties are. On the top we have our SIM file, where we will define our boundary condition, such as constraints and forces. In design simulation you only have to worry about two files, which is the idolized file and the SIM file as every simulation-related operation can be done within the SIM file. Since my model already is simplified and ready for simulation, I can go ahead and set up the simulation. First, I'll add materials to the polygon body. Next, I'll create a mesh of the geometry. Now I can click the lightning icon next to the element size here and let NX automatically suggest a suitable element size. But given this relatively simple geometry, I can accept the finer mess than suggested and click OK. Now we can set up our boundary conditions. For the sake of simplicity, we used a fixed constraint at the lower part, which locks the face in all directions. Then we put a bearing force in an actual direction of the rod 
to simulate the pressure that comes from the piston head. Now everything we have done up until now is called pre-processing, or in other words, preparing our model for simulation. So now that our pre-processing setup is done, we can go ahead and run the simulation. The results can be found in the result file below, and we have the option to do more elaborate post-processing operation. We can, for example, check out various results like displacement or stresses, and we can also identify the location of the nodes with highest and or lowest values, which will give you an indication of where we can improve your geometry. Now when all this is set up, we can go back to the idolized file and do any desired changes to our design. And after this is done, the mesh and materials are already defined, so all we have to do now is click update to our mesh. Actually, this is all we have to do to run the simulation again with a new geometry. But for this example, I want to directly compare the two results, so I'm going to make myself a clone solution and solve this one. Now that this is done, I can go to the layout setting and choose to show a side-by-side -side layout of my graphics window, and compare results directly from the previous geometry to the new one. Before we wrap up this session, I want to demonstrate the beauty of having the associative copy and not touch the original geometry. So let's say a change is requested unrelated to the analysis test results and the original model needs to be changed. So we do some changes with the synchronous tools and then go back to our idolized copy. And now we can actually see that these changes that we did in our original geometry also has occurred here, while still preserving the simplifications we did earlier. As a matter of fact, this way of working can save you a lot of time and keeping you prepared for any changes thrown at you, and you don't need to repeat the pre-processing operations.